The Story of Sambo and the Twins by Helen Bannerman Once upon a time, little black Sambo was very busy. He was building a house for himself, and his father, Black Jambo, had given him a big hammer and a lot of long nails. So he was nailing two bits of wood together when he heard someone calling. Little Black Sambo! Little Black Sambo! He looked up and saw Black Mambo standing at the door. Yes, mother! He shouted. What is it? Come here and you'll see, said Black Mambo. So Little Black Sambo ran to the house, and there he saw two darling little black babies lying in a big basket. Oh, said he, are they for me? Yes, said Black Mambo. They are yours for always and always. How lovely, said Little Black Sambo. I shall call them Little Black Wolf and Little Black Move. At first, Little Black Wolf and Little Black Move were so tiny that they had always to be kept in their basket. But by and by, they got big enough to sit on Little Black Sambo's knee, and presently, they got big enough to walk with his hands to steady them. And then they got big enough for him to give them their bath and their supper of bread and milk. And on their first birthday, Little Black Sambo gave them each a mug, and on one mug was painted Wolf, and on the other was painted Moof. And on their next birthday, Little Black Sambo gave them two lovely long sashes, and Little Black Wolf's was red, and Little Black Moof's was blue. And then didn't Little Black Wolf and Little Black Moof look grand? One day, Little Black Sambo was playing at horses with them, when Black Mambo called him. Oh, Little Black Sambo, said she, please go to the jungle and fetch me some sticks. I want to roast this mutton for dinner, and I haven't enough wood. So Little Black Sambo hung his little red coat and his little blue trousers on a bush, because he did not want to spoil them, and ran off to fetch some sticks and he left Little Black Wolf and Little Black Moof playing at the door with their mugs. Now, not very far from Little Black Sambo's house grew a grove of very tall palm trees, very thick and close together. And at the very top of the very tallest of the trees lived two wicked monkeys. They had often looked at Little Black Wolf and Little Black Moof and wished they could have them for their babies. So, while Little Black Sambo was away in the jungle, gathering a big bundle of sticks and bringing them home on his shoulder, these wicked monkeys came creeping softly down and snatched up Little Black Wolf and Little Black Moof and scampered away up to the top of the tree. And they thought the mug so pretty, they took them too. Poor Little Black Wolf and Little Black Moof screamed and struggled, and Black Mambo came running to the door, but it was all no use. The wicked monkeys carried them right away up to the top of a tree and said, Ha! Ha! Now you are our babies! And Little Black Wolf and Little Black Moof cried and cried and cried and their tears fell through the leaves of the tree and pattered on the ground like rain. When Little Black Sambo came back with the sticks, he was very much surprised not to see Little Black Wolf and Little Black Moof playing at the door. Little Black Wolf, Little Black Moof, he called, where are you? But there was no answer. Then Black Mambo came running, Oh, little black Sambo, cried she. The wicked monkeys have carried off little black wolf and little black moof. Poor little black Sambo dropped all his sticks in horror. Oh dear, he cried, what shall we do? 
and little black sambo and black mambo ran to the trees and they looked and looked and looked up among the leaves but they couldn't see little black wolf and little black move anywhere and poor black mambo sat down and threw her apron over her head and cried and cried and cried for she thought she would never see little black wolf and little black move again and little black sambo wandered sadly away among the trees all of a sudden he saw the two little mugs lying at the foot of the tallest of all the trees the wicked monkeys had had to drop them before they could climb up with little black wolf and little black Moof in their arms so he left one mug at the foot of the tree to mark it and he came flying back with the other in his hand mother mother he cried i found the tree up jumped Black Mambo and ran with him to the tree, and as they stood staring up, a big tear splashed right onto little Black Sambo's nose and another onto Black Mambo's, so they knew it really was the right tree. But they did not know how to get up the tree, and they were afraid to call. For fear little Black Wolf and little Black Moof would peep over and tumble down. Little Black Sambo sat down at the foot of the tree and gazed up into the leaves and tried hard to think of some way of getting up. I'd like to batter those wicked monkeys with my hammer, he said, and suddenly that gave him an idea. He took his hammer and the big nails Black Jambo had given him and he began to hammer them into the tree one by one till he had made a sort of ladder right up to the top of the stem. And up he climbed joyfully enough, but when he got to the top of the stem, to the place where the leaves come out, he found he could not push past the prickly points and the nails would not stick at all, so he had just to come down again very sorrowfully indeed. He sat down at the foot of the tree in despair and cried and cried and cried. <coughs> now it so happened that when Black Mambo came to the door with a leg of mutton in her hand, a big eagle was soaring up in the sky, so high nobody could see him. But with his big bright eye, he spied Black Mambo and the mutton, though they were so far away, and he thought what a lovely dinner the mutton would make for his little white eaglets, if only Black Mambo would give it to him. When he saw little Black Sambo sitting under the tree, he thought he would ask him if there was any way he could persuade Black Mambo to give him the mutton. So down he flew, and when he saw how little Black Sambo was crying, he was very sorry for him, for he was a kind old eagle. And he said, What's the matter, little Black Sambo? Why are you crying like that? And little Black Sambo said, the wicked monkeys that live in this tree have taken away little black wolf and little black moof, and I don't know how to get them back. If I help you, said the eagle, do you think black mambo would give me that leg of mutton? I'm sure she would, said little black sambo. Very well then, said the eagle, I'll fetch them, and up he flew to the top of the tree. When the wicked monkeys saw the eagle, they were terrified and scrambled down as fast as they possibly could and ran away, way into the jungle. But when little black wolf and little black moof saw him, they were terrified too, and they crept down among the leaves and made themselves so small he could not possibly reach them. And the eagle came down again to little black sambo and said, Little black wolf and little black moof won't let me come near them. They creep away down among the leaves. Whatever are we to do? So little black sambo climbed up on the eagle's back and the eagle spread out his great wings and flew away up with little black sambo holding on tight round his neck. 
Then the eagle perched on the tree and little black Sambo climbed off his back and scrambled close to little black wolf and little black move. And oh, how happy little black wolf and little black move were to see him. Then little black Sambo took off the red sash and tied little black wolf firmly on the eagle's neck on one side and he took off the blue sash and tied little black wolf firmly on the other and then he climbed onto the eagle's back again. And the eagle spread out his great wings again and flew down to the ground and little black Sambo climbed down and untied the red sash and lifted little black wolf to the ground and then he untied the blue sash and lifted little black wolf down. And then they all said thank you most politely to the eagle and bowed to him and the eagle bowed back to them. And Little Black Sambo took Little Black Wolf in one hand and Little Black Wolf in the other and they all ran to the house as fast as ever they could. Black Jumbo had just come home from his work and Black Mambo was telling him all about the wicked monkeys when they heard Little Black Sambo, Little Black Wolf and Little Black Wolf running and all calling Father, Mother together. Out they ran and oh how glad they were when they saw all the children safe and sound. And Black Jumbo hugged Little Black Wolf and Black Mambo hugged Little Black Wolf and Little Black Sambo hugged everybody. And the eagle came and Black Mambo gave him two legs of mutton. And he carried them away to his little white eaglets and what a feast they had. And as Black Mambo had no mutton left for dinner, she made an enormous dish of pancakes and they all sat down to dinner and they ate them everyone and so everybody had a feast except the wicked monkeys. Hi, if you like this video Please give this a like and hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified whenever I release a new video.